What if you lost your eyesight at the age of 20? My research group is here to explain to you how glucose-induced obesity can increase susceptibility to cataracts via the deamidation of lens crystallines. Hi, my name is Kayla Sorek and I am a senior here at Corbin University. I study biomedical sciences with a tract for pre-med. Hello, my name is Emmanuel Montanez. I am a senior at Corbin University and I am a biomedical science major. Hi, my name is Damian Ball. I am a sophomore at Corbin University and I'm studying biology and math and I plan to go into research after college. This slide features an infographic displaying the OPC epidemic throughout the world. As you can see in North America, Europe and parts of the Middle East, there's a much higher obesity rate. Um, a major contributor of, this, contributor of this is the high sugar intake featured in the Western diet. Before we delve into our research, what is a cataract? Well, a cataract is the clouding of the lens that leads to a scattering of light across the retina, um, which leads to blurry vision or even blindness. Why should we study cataracts? Well, cataracts are the leading cause of blindness throughout the world and the leading cause of low vision in the United States. And currently the only accepted cure is to surgically remove and replace said cataracts. What causes a cataract? Well, the lenses in our eyes are made up of crystallines, which make up about 90% of the total lens proteins. Now, these crystallines are in a natural crystal lattice-like structure that are normally soluble. And when these crystallines are denatured or disturbed, um, they unfold and cause, cause large aggregates in the lenses, which eventually leads to cataracts. So there are two families of lens crystallines. The first is an alpha crystalline, and it's related to the heat shock protein family. The second is a beta gamma superfamily with high sequence homology. The gammas are usually formed as monomers, and the betas are usually formed as dimers all the way up into an octomer. The purpose of this study, we wanted to develop an obese mouse model via high glucose consumption that could be used to study the link between obesity and cataract development. Our hypothesis stated that obesity would lead to acceleration of changes in the lens proteins, specifically through deamidation, that are associated with age-related cataracts. As we continue to age, there can be changes or alterations done through these um, lens crystallines, um, and this kind of disrupts the proteostasis. And there's uh, many modifications that can happen to these lens crystallines, um, such as such examples are oxidation, methylation, acetylation, and deamidation. Um, among many others as well. Um, and we specifically went with deamidation because there's been some research and already published literature about deamidation and how it could be potentially uh, the major modification associated with insolubility of lens proteins. There's two major um, amino acids that can be uh, deamidated, which are asparagine and glutamine. Um, and the deamidation of asparagine residue under the physiological conditions, um, the side chain is attacked by the nitrogen atom of the following peptide group, forming an asymmetric succinamide intermediate. Now, the, as the asymmetry of the intermediate results in two products of its hydrolysis, uh, either being aspartic acid or isoaspartic acid, which is a beta amino acid. The deamination of glutamine residue may proceed via kind of the, via the same mechanism, but a uh, much slower rate since the formation of the six-member ring glutamide intermediate is less favored than the succinamide intermediate for asparagine. Now, the reason that this is important is because this can affect the tertiary and quaternary structure and protein solubility. We're essentially looking at our obese mouse model um, via glucose consumption. And so these mice were put on a 30% glucose uh, water diet uh, for 27 weeks. And at the end of the study, you can see that glucose mice are much heavier and also, and also fatter um, compared to those of the control group. So as you can see in the left graph here um, with body weight, we can see that they are much heavier. Uh, the middle graph here is kind of demonstrating the retroperitoneal adipose tissue that was extracted. Um, and this graph is showing essentially that th they gained weight, but they also gained more fat. And also we did a glucose tolerance test, which are shown on the far right. And this was to show that they were not diabetic. Um, if they were diabetic, that would mean that these cataract these were diabetic cataracts, and they these have a much different. There's a much different mechanism that is done through diabetic cataracts compared to cataracts that are, are formed through deamidation. We were then able to extract the lens uh, proteins and separate them into soluble and insoluble fractions, and then those were sent off to OHSU, in which they were able to 
um, be analyzed through their mass spectrometer. And from this, uh, the deamidations resulted in a mass shift analyzed in the mass spec. And what we found was that crystallines in the insoluble fraction had higher rates of deamidation. And also, glucose led to an increase in deamidation for both soluble and insoluble crystallines. We compared our mouse models to other researchers that have looked into the modifications that are found in cataractous proteins and discovered that the primary modification in insolubility is deamidation. As shown on the graph here, the water insoluble is a lot more prevalent than the water soluble proteins. This helped us understand that our mouse model was correct and we could continue on in our research. Here we have the highest deamidation sites found on insoluble crystallines. This graph is consistent with other literature in that it shows the primary modification of insolubility is deamidation. We see that asparagine has a greater extent of deamidation than glutamine does on the bottom, as well as the insoluble rates of deamidation are much higher than the soluble rates of deamidation. This graph shows the deamidation of insoluble crystallines. It highlights the most significantly deamidated amino acid residues within the insoluble fraction only. Here we see that control crystallines are being compared to the glucose crystallines. And this is consistent data with previous studies that we have looked at within the same residues. So after determining which proteins are being deamidated and the sites in which deaminations occur on, we're able to use molecular modeling and visualize where these deamidation sites occur. And as you can see, the deaminations are all external on the protein, which is important to note because in order for this reaction to occur spontaneously, the, it needs immediate access to water, and that is confirmed in each of our models. Now, given the sites of deamination, we are able to model the potential effects of one of these said deaminations. Um, for this instance, we use crystalline beta B3. Now, on the left, we have the non-deaminated form, and on the right, we have the deaminated beta B3, which takes place on N33. And when this happens, you can see that the entire highlighted red chain is affected by the deamidation, which changes the nature of the protein. In conclusion, we say that post-translational modifications, specifically deamidations, are upregulated in the lenses of our glucose mice. Our novel findings included elevated rates of deamidation in the glucose lenses, and the relationship to insolubility of lens crystallines suggests that there is a mechanistic link of obesity and cataract development. Finally, we want to ask the question, is deamidation truly the cause, or could it be an effect of cataracts? We would like to thank Corbin University and the Math and Science Department, especially Dr. Sarah Comstock, as well as the former student researchers on this project. We would also like to thank MJ Murdoch Charitable Trust and OHSU for funding and helping us with our research these past couple of years.